everyone. Welcome to the Nintendo Prime Podcast episode, gosh, 98? Yes, it is. Should have been 98 like weeks ago. Yes, um, we should have been 100 by now. Yes, we should have. Oh, man. How's it going, everyone? It feels good to be back. I am your host, as always, Nathaniel Rumpel Jantz, Mr. Prime. And who do I have over to my left or your guys' right? Eric Moore. Eric more as always again we were going to have some people on this podcast but it didn't work out if you would like to be on an episode of the nintendo prime podcast be sure to check out our patreon at patreon.com slash nintendo prime for 20 dollars a month you can be on one episode of the podcast per month uh we have a bunch of 20 dollars backers not all of them take advantage of that but uh there are some extra slots available right now that we just added this past week if you would like to get in on that uh that being said uh because this is the last podcast recorded in the month of february even though it releases in march publicly although this one is being streamed publicly which is normally a ten dollar backer benefit mm-hmm. they get it every single thursday uh they get the live stream version Oh, excuse me, the live stream version of this. Uh, I am not feeling the greatest, so I apologize if some things happen here. Um, they usually get a live stream version for $10 and up, uh, but once per month we do live stream it publicly as a kind of an advertisement for how this podcast is made possible. It is 100% supported through Patreon. Without Patreon, this podcast is not here um, more than like once a month. So uh, I know it feels like in February it was one time, but that's not normal. Yeah. Uh, no. So. Anyways, let's pretend that that didn't happen. Um, one thing we do have to get out of the way uh, for the month of February is uh, thanking all of our $5 and up Patreon backers. Eric, why don't you get us started with all the $5 backers? All right. We're with the $5 backers. We got Corey Spaulding, and I apologize if I definitely butcher some names here. Well, uh, we got Adam Kosinolnik. Yeah. Kasilniak? Kasilniak, yeah. That's what it looks like to me. (laughs) That's probably not not a bad pronunciation. Uh, We got Nick Garcia, Josh Walker, uh, Miranda Har, uh, Nick S., Alex Boyer, Thomas Manor, John, James Fazel, T.T., Eric Levette, uh, Alexander Walford, uh, Alex Laybourne, Chris Palmer, Shaharam Ali, all right, uh, the, the $10 backers are Lord Platypus. Nice. Matthew Campos, Edward Norton, Zenith, Fool of a Took, Mark Bahagiar, Joe Prosco, Nintendog, Roy Elmer, and Eric Wolf. And I guess I'll just throw Joshua Farrington in because for some reason he's at an imaginary tier at $15. Why not? It doesn't actually exist, but Why thank not? you so much for the extra $5. Uh, who's at our $20 tier? We got Be Righteous, Two Homes, Mr. Neil Willis, Corey Bar. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, have, you have to. <laughs> Corey Boheim, uh, Andrew243, Nick uh, Baturek. And we have a special $100 backer this month, Robert D. I think it's supposed to be, it's not Robert, it's Robert D. Smith <laughs> the fourth. I totally had a typo in that. I didn't even um, realize that. <laughs> I didn't either. Uh, thank you uh, guys so much for that support. Without it, this is not possible. Not just the podcast, but this channel, uh, especially through this rough month of February. Again, we haven't had a podcast for a few weeks. I apologize. We are back. Should be weekly from now on. Going to try to do a better job of planning. Like if Eric can't be here, um, I've been kind of in talks with 5J on, on him kind of being a backup. Um, you guys might know 5J because he used to live stream on weekends. He does not anymore. For those that want to know why, he just straight up told me that he was getting burned out. Hmm? Between streaming on my channel, he also streams on Game Over Jesse's channel, and then his own live streams. It was too much for him. Uh, so he didn't mean to burn out. It just happened. Yeah, uh, no. But he still streams on his own his own channels, and I think he's just drawing himself back because he overextended oh, himself. No. So, um, That being said, uh, let's – well, I, I, you know what? I'm going to bring this back just because it, it's been a little bit, and we only have one planned topic. Yes, folks, you know we're talking about Pokemon. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Like, like, we're not going to talk about that Generation 8 new game stuff. Uh, but before we get into that, uh, Eric. Yes. What games have you been playing, if any, this entire month? Because it's been a while. I got a surprise one. You got a surprise I one? I actually bought a new game. What? For Switch? Yeah. No. Yes. Not. Mm, mm, okay. It it isn't is up to. I do have some complaints about it. Well, what is it? That would be ukulele. 
Oh, you, you bought ukulele. I did. I okay. Did. It may just be Joy-Cons, but it feels like the control mechanisms, like the running, the when you're spinning and that... that uh, the roll. The, the roll. Yep. It, it feels like there's... It's almost sometimes too responsive, and it, it just... I'll be going, and I just want to turn just a tiny bit, but I'm way over here. And it's yeah, like, you get used to it. No, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> you get used to it. And it, <laughs> so, it, it. It is jarring. It wasn't as jarring to me at the time because there really wasn't any other, like, Odyssey didn't exist or there wasn't other 3D yeah. platformers at the time on Switch, so it didn't really, like, get me at the time. But, like, after playing Odyssey and then going back to it, it's mm-hmm. like, hmm, hmm, the controls don't feel quite as tight. But uh, you'll you'll get used to it. Now it is I, it is admittedly easier with the Pro Controller because the sticks are longer, so you have more travel. Mm-hmm. So it, there's a little more finer on that. that that's one. Just the Joy Cons in general have less travel, so you have you know your your little fine tuned movements like that aren't as easy yeah, to do. But because it, it's it's like I, I just move the stick barely, and I'm like yeah, gone that way, and it's like no. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, it, I get frustrated, and then <laughs> the, the parts that I get frustrated with is when all of a sudden. You like you're trying to make these jumps and you, you do it well enough and then all of a sudden you just fall and you're like all of a sudden you're twenty minutes back and you're like why? <laughs> because that's the way it was in Banjo Kazooie. Don't you remember you fall and you got to redo the whole damn thing? I don't, but I don't. Er- that's it, that's exactly what it was like in Banjo Kazooie. Yeah, that's know. the thing. Yeah. The, the, one of the big complaints people have about this game. Are it lacks all of the modern conveniences of gaming and is straight up an N64 game. Yeah. And so, like, we think back on, oh, we don't mind that in Banjo Kazooie, Banjo and Tooie, and Conquer, blah, 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 blah. But, like, we don't re- remember those parts. We just remember all the good stuff. We don't remember the you fall and you're frustrated and you have to redo the whole damn thing all over again. Mm-hmm. And you have to, like, it takes 20 minutes to get back to where you were, only for you to thumb slip on the stick again and do yeah. it all over again. Yeah. And there's no save point that brings you back up there. Yeah. You just, like, yeah. that's exactly what those games were like. And this is made by a lot of the same people that did those games. And yeah, I it's wish was, literally made the, the same way. The other thing that I don't <laughs> like, I mean, it's a good game. It's a, I like it a lot. Well, I figured you would like it. I, th- I thought there would be. Some things that you would complain about because you now the gaze of it being it's not Banjo Kazooie where you're mentally going to be more forgiving of the things that might frustrate you mm-hmm. because you know how awesome the next thing is going to be. Right. This is a game you don't know how awesome the next thing is going to be, so it's like it's got the play style you're going to enjoy, mm-hmm. but things are going to frustrate you more. Yeah, it, it it doesn't quite feel as obvious what you're supposed to do next either. Sure. Because Banjo Kazooie, it's kind. Of, they kind of the levels, they kind of lead you in the. They kind, kind of, of a, give you a. It's, you it's can go off linear, the path, yeah. But it's not. Yeah, because it's it's kind of but, well. It's like Breath of the Wild in the sense like Breath of the Wild tells you where to go, but you don't have to go there. Mm-hmm. This game doesn't deliberately like Banjo Kazooie didn't deliberately tell you, but it kind of it did like a camera trick whenever someone was talking to you, kind of showing you like, yeah. oh, you should go up here, but yeah. you don't have to go up there. Right. You can go anywhere you want, but eventually you mm-hmm. should probably should go up there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this game doesn't do as good of a job of that. Um, mm-hmm. How far are you in it? Um, I'm in the second level. Okay. It's no level. Okay. Um, basically just kind of started that. Um, trying to find some of the other moves so I can get back into the first level and get some of the more of the, the pages. Yep. Um, Did you get all the moves in, moves from the first level? Yeah, I've gotten all the moves in okay. the first and second level. Okay. Um. But another one of the bigger things is there's no actual, like, save option. It's save and quit. And it's like, really? I just want to save. I don't actually want to quit. And, and this game actually does, in handheld mode, does take a little bit to load, Um, I've noticed. And so, yeah, saving and quitting is kind of a pain in the ass. Sure. Yeah, I, I'm not a fan of it, of, of that aspect. Not the game. I enjoy the game. I, I actually haven't, I should, that's a, kind of on my back out of the beat. Now that you're playing it again, maybe I'll pick it up again so I actually fin- finish it off. Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe maybe it's, again, it's, I because I, when I was playing it on the, at, at, I bought it, I think, I bought it at Chris's house, and I was playing it in his dock, and it didn't seem 
as bad. So maybe it's more of a I need to dock it for that. For the what? The for, controls? For the, no, for the, it, it, no, just yeah. It, I don't know if it was just the controls or if it was just it felt better on the on the large screen. Sure. I don't know how to explain I, it. You no, know, I, I hear you on that. There are some games on Switch that, that I feel like that where, yeah, it's playable and portable. It's okay. But I think for, like, ukulele, it's a collect-a-thon. Mm-hmm. So a big thing in collect-a-thons... Is being able to see things. You got to see things. Yeah. And you got to see far. And, like, mm-hmm. you're trying to collect... I think they're quills? Yeah. Or whatever? Yeah. Um, they're small. Mm-hmm. And it's just easier to see when the screen is bigger. Easier to see things going on in the background. And thus... Mm-hmm. I don't want to say it makes the game easier, but it, it makes you not have to be as close to figure things out. Right. Uh, and I think that's important in any sort of major 3D platforming collect-a-thon kind of game. Uh, and I think that's a disadvantage of being on the go. And it also shows um, it also shows why I actually like the Switch mm-hmm. because, you, you, yeah, you could take it with you, but there are some experiences that are better on the big screen, and it lets you have those experiences on the big screen. Right. Whereas if it was just a portable, which some people – wish that switch was just a portable and didn't even have the dock mode option it can hurt some games in, in, yeah. in that kind of sense and i think yeah. ukulele is a, a good example of that um i'm <laughs> yeah there, there there's there's some fun things in that game have you uh have you found yourself laughing at any of the jokes yet oh, yeah you're pretty early on yeah. so the jokes are yeah, yeah, yeah. are, are kind of oh, for sure i mean they're yeah <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're lame but of course they're lame I, it, it's banjo kazooie it it in that it the sense of humor i i love the the uh um talking because again it's all banjo kazooie <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> love that it does get a little old after a while but you know it, it's not terrible i i do like it um trying to think of what else there is um overall i i mean i enjoy the game yeah but I always, I always knew you'd enjoy the game. The, the the thing is, to me, is how much do you enjoy it will be determined, I think, by how long you continue to play it for. Mm-hmm. Um, because I just happen to know you haven't beat Zelda yet, you haven't beat Odyssey yet, mm-hmm. and you really, really, really love those games. Mm-hmm. But if there was like a new Banjo Kazooie game, it, you would have that beat oh, the first it. week. Yes, so it's like yeah, so. Probably. It, it, <laughs> yeah, probably. So it's one of those. Is this going to be the first game on Switch you actually beat? I don't know. I um, mean, depends on how long it is, oh, too, right, of course. Right, right. But. Um, and I'm not well, telling 100%. The right. thing is, has the thing. It's a collect-a-thon, a, so we can't help it. We have I'm to collect a, everything. Yeah, I'm a 100 percent in a collect-a-thon. Yeah. Oh. yeah, yeah. I mean, that's why you play them. Um, it's for the the cool platforming and the, the collecting things. It, is it, at this point in time, with how long it's been out, is it a spoiler warning? No. No, no there's no okay. spoilers. No. Uh, I do like the throwback uh, quiz show. Uh, to get into the, the second one, that yeah. one was that one was funny. Yeah. Um. Although, I do feel like there were some questions that were given to you that you had no chance of knowing because you never actually accessed those areas in the first level because you didn't have certain moves. And it's like you're asking me this question, and I didn't yeah. find this character. I didn't. No. I didn't do this. I didn't do that. Well, it's how? trial and error. No, I know it is. That's how I got through it. <laughs> That's how I got through it, too. Yeah. But it was like, what? I didn't find this character. This character's in the second level! What? <laughs> I mean, it's possible that the one character's in the first level, too, but I just haven't found him because I don't have the moves to get to him. Sure. But it's like, okay, sure. Why not? Sure. I like I like the throwback. Um, honestly, the whole game's a throwback, so it's... Yeah. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's a fun game. Yeah. Um, not not perfect, but you know what? It's been a long time since we had a game like it. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's been other 3D, you know, you know, even like Super Lucky's Tale uh, that came out on Xbox. Like, really, really good. That might be coming to Switch eventually here. And, like, that one, that's another one I'm interested in, in seeing. Some people are like, oh, some people really liked it. Some people said, oh, it's not as good as the old games. It's like, well, are we putting the bar too high? Because these 3D collect-a-thon style games, besides Mario, just haven't really been around. Yeah. So, I like... Can we give people a break? Like, like this is this isn't even the full old school team that made it. Like, it's just mm-hmm. part of that team, uh, and so it's like, okay, they did this. Don't you think that if they do it again, they're going to be better the second time right. around? Yeah, you would figure they're going to learn from it and get better. Right. So, no, definitely. Um, you know, like let them grow. Let's not like just destroy these games because oh my gosh, they're not as good as our holy grails. Right. Um, right. You know, 
I mean, I I want them to tackle a spiritual successor next to, you know, a little conquer action. Oh. I want, I dude, I want some M rated comedy. And well, uh, you're gonna have you can't go conquer themselves. No, no, obviously, right. just like this is Banjo Kazooie, but it's not Banjo Kazooie. Right. Like, right. yeah, something like that, but then goes for the M rated humor, oh, yeah. the toilet humor, and yeah. oh, oh yeah. I, mean, I would love that. We'll see yeah. if that ever happens. I don't know yeah. what these what these groups are working on next, but um. Is there any other games you played this this uh, month? No, I don't. Think like, I don't, we obviously played some Madden on the Xbox. A little X, bit of Switch or a little bit of Smash. A little bit of Smash. When we back when I was back over at Chris's earlier this month. Um, yeah, no, I, I think those were the main two games that I played. Cool. Uh, for me, let's see. I gotta dig into it. I, first of all, I gotta be honest. I have not been playing a lot of my Switch over the last couple, not really most of the month, which it, it's weird because you figure with all the snow days and mm-hmm. the not, you know, working and then not feeling good, you know, why wouldn't you pick up your Switch and play it? Just didn't have the energy or the time. Well, that and, and snow you, days it, your kids would have it. And, well, no, I don't let it, really let them play it on the snow days too no. much. No. But the the first the one snow day I did, mm-hmm. but outside of that I I usually try to entertain them and have like different activities right. and stuff so they're not just playing right. video games. Because I know I time. saw the one picture. Yeah, pictures yeah, that yeah. Days. That was the that was like that was the one snow day where I was like, okay, yeah. play video games, I'm done. Yeah, I, was, I think I was I think I wasn't feeling <laughs> that good was, that day. Well, well, that was probably snow day four in a row. <laughs> I don't know. Could At have that been. Point in time. Uh, but I. I, so, for starters, I just haven't played a lot of my Switch this month. This is probably the the least amount I have played my Switch ever. Um, just not out of desire. I've I've had, like, like, earlier today I had a desire to play it. I just didn't have it with me. Um, I had a desi- I've had desires to play it at times when the battery was dead because, you know, the last person to touch it was my son. Uh, and... Another part part was, you know, I had to sell some of my games. That I, so, like, some of the games I want to play, I just don't have right now, which I can afford to get them back. I just haven't done that yet. I'm kind of waiting on a good sale. Or I thought about making, hey, a GameStop video where I order all a bunch of used, <laughs> a bunch of used Nintendo Switch games online and see what they send me. I, it, it, I'm going to regret it. Does GameStop I'm re- sell grab bags? No, no, no. You have to, you know, you buy the games. Okay. But, like, you don't know if you're just getting the cartridge. You don't know if you're getting the box. You don't know if you're getting the manuals. You don't know what you're getting. You know you're getting the cartridge. Oh. You, you hope that it's not a bootleg or something. You don't really know. It's kind of a crapshoot. You bought the game, so they'll send you the game. Maybe, unless they send you the wrong game. Uh, yeah. But, um, anyways, oh. uh, I thought about doing that, but then I'm like, do I want to deal with, like, if something's wrong and I have to send it back? I don't know I want to deal with that. Mm-hmm. I would rather just go in the store, but yeah, right. um, they don't also always have all the games I want in the Vlog store. Day. So, um, <laughs> anyways, no, the thing is, you can't take a camera in the GameStop; they make you turn them off. So what? Yeah. Although I think if the store manager was there and I sweet talked to him a little bit, he'll let me keep it on. Why? It's a corporate thing. Why? Because nobody brings a camera into GameStop to make them look good. Sure. <laughs> When's the last time you saw a well, video about GameStop that made GameStop look good? GameStop does a very good job of making GameStop not look good. I know, but that's what I'm saying. Nobody brings a camera into GameStop for the purpose of making GameStop look good. It's always to make them screw up somehow so they can make a viral video happen. Yeah. Well, I mean... I mean, it's just like you can't have your camera on in Best Buy either. There's a lot of stores that won't let you have your cameras on. Doesn't mean there aren't people that sneak it or try to you know be discreet about it, but... Yeah, that's what the phone's for. <laughs> I know. Well, that's what people try to do. Like they'll like try to be like, oh, I put it in my top pocket with the camera conveniently yeah. turned around. It's like yeah. if that's not obvious. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's. Uh, anyways, um, <laughs> so we'll see. There might be a video on that coming in the future uh, if I decide to get some of my games back from uh, from GameStop just to make a video out of it and to get my games back. Um, so I haven't played a lot. Obviously, some Madden. Been been really enjoying Madden on the Xbox One X. Uh, 
once it finally got installed and all, all that was taken care of, it's actually been it's been a pretty pretty smooth experience. Still some bugs here and there, but they're the same old bugs that I'm used to. So I don't know if I just give it the excuse because I'm used to them. Like like the fix. like the fact that right now the Xbox is on, the TV is off. After we're done recording, I'll turn the TV on and the game won't work. Yeah, and we'll have to close the game yeah, for right. some reason to restart. I for some yeah. reason sleep mode, one of the most basic modes ever, just doesn't work for video games yeah. or work for Madden anyways. Yeah. I haven't had a problem with it on Switch at all. Uh, one thing I, I, I can say is I uh, did play a little Smash Bros. this month yeah. um, with um, with my son, helping him out. He, he's actually further in World of Light than I am. Um, nice. Good for him because yeah. <laughs> he's determined as hell to beat yeah. it. Uh, and I've been helping him with some of the, the, the tougher ones. Uh, I, think, I think he's playing on easy. I'm not even sure. Maybe he's playing on normal. And... Uh, I've been noticing an issue with my Joy Cons. Yeah. Um, they just randomly, like when when they're on the side, mm-hmm. they just randomly disconnect, mm-hmm. and I have to take them off to reconnect them. Hmm. Like I can't just hit the buttons with it on to reconnect. Only it only happens during Smash too. Interesting. I don't know what's well, up with that. So if I leave them disconnected, like if I take them off and I put them in the Joy Con grip. Yeah. It's fine. Not no no problem. They never disconnect. Hmm. But if they're connected to the side of the of it, they just randomly in the middle of matches, whatever, they just stop working. Interesting. It's like they died, but they're not dead. You mean like by Pokemon It makes no sense. Um and I don't know if other people are having this problem and I've only had it happen with Smash. Yeah. So I Well, I know Smash had some random it seemed like random issues from what I remember with like but I I think it ended up coming down to terrible say uh uh cards oh yeah you're talking, the, talking about the the uh, save, dlc yeah. the dlc yeah. save say data corruption yeah. yeah yeah that was that was apparently supposedly had to do with with uh fake uh sd cards i but i don't know like I th- i've never had that joy con issue maybe that's something i should probably talk about in on a more public live stream where i'm talking to yeah. the chat more because then yeah, for uh sure, for sure I actually, I'm actually curious if it's a problem where people have because I can't like make it happen. It's hard for me to capture on camera because I don't know when it's going to happen. It's just random. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't, th- there doesn't seem to be any consistency to what's causing it. Right. Uh, and it's possible I just have bad Joy Cons, and if I get new Joy Cons, there's no problem. Or it's possible I mean, there's something are, wrong with my Switch. They're original. Or there's originals. something wrong with the game. I yeah. don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um. But is there up? date for the joy cons or are you just missing nope either no? they are up okay. to date so but yeah but then again if it was missing an update and that was causing the issue you'd fi- you'd see it across all games you'd figure well no it's not, not always the case on switch uh just like you can get drifting like stick drifting in one game but not another it, it, i don't really get it <laughs> okay well, i don't understand could it be, could be memory leaks too and um, who knows stuff where you know you, you push a stick one direction and all of a sudden you start eventually your, your character just starts slowly going in that direction and you're like i'm not pushing that direction anymore what why are we what i can say walking? is the month of february is the first month i have not bought a new game since switch came out well you still got i think i have bought a new two game hours? every single every single month at least one game since switch came out you still got two hours <laughs> I mean, part of me wants to get Wargroove. Came back out back on February first. Heard it's really, really good. Mm-hmm. But when am I going to play it? I don't know. Yeah. I okay. I'm sorry. No, I did get one new game because it oh. was free. Tetris ninety nine. Oh, okay. So there you go. I uh, met the. Did I didn't know? buy it, no, but that's because yeah. it's not a game you can buy. Oh, okay. Well, well you can't argue I did because I have to have the Nintendo Switch Online service, uh-huh. and I have that. Yeah. So I guess yeah. I have played Tetris ninety nine uh, this month. Uh, I did really enjoy Tetris 99. Yeah. I think it's brilliant. Ba- Battle Royale Tetris. Yeah. Battle Royale Tetris. Let that sink in. Yeah. And it just works. It sounds like the stupidest thing, yeah. but it just works. And I'm I love it. Uh, I'm not like th- that great at it, but I don't care. It's fun. Yeah. It is so fun. It, it And what I like about it is it is a battle of survival. It's not like, oh, yeah, oh, high score. No, no. It's last... 
person standing, baby. Yeah. And, like, you can attack other people, like, by sending extra lines to them. Yeah. And I haven't quite figured out how that all works yet. There's a specific way to do it, and that's, that's why all 99 of you are on screen at once because you can, like, select people and, like... I don't care. I'm just trying to stay alive myself. I'm not to the point that I'm pro enough. I'm not going to Tetris. Uh, yeah. Ah! <laughs> yeah. Ah! That's what it feels like. Like I'm going along cool, and all of a sudden I get to the top 50, and I'm like, what is going on? Stop <laughs> sending me lines. <laughs> <laughs> they just know it's you, and they're like, nope. Yep, yep. Nope. Oh, it's, nope. a U- it's a YouTuber. We got to yeah, take him right. out. Uh, so, yeah, no, Tetris 99, a lot of fun, a lot more fun than I than I ever thought the concept would be. Uh, so I have I've played quite a bit of that. I've probably sung, that's probably the game I played the most this month. I probably sunk at least ten hours into Tetris Ninety Nine. Huh. Um, but yeah, besides that, uh, I did play the demo for Damon X Machina. I played and beat that. Mm-hmm. Um, I am now sold on the game. I made a whole video about that. I think about mm-hmm. how I'm sold on the game. So it's not perfect. Uh, I still don't fully understand the story. I'm sure if I replayed through the demo, I would understand it better. I just, there was a lot going on, and I didn't pay, I guess, close enough attention. Um, I was having too much fun with the gameplay, which surprised me because I'm not into mech games. Uh, I mentioned in my video about it that it reminded me, uh, the gameplay itself reminded me a lot of Starlink Battle right. for Atlas, which yep. is why I like it. Right. Uh, other people are going to be like, oh, well, that this game is more lo- more like these other mech games. I'm like, that's cool. I don't play mech games. Right. So <laughs> I'm comparing it to things I've played. I'm sorry. Um, and, uh, I really, really enjoyed it. There are, are, uh, FPS issues for sure. Um, and I think that turned a lot of people off from the game. Yeah. Um, I, I think I'm, I'm a weird one with FPS. Mm-hmm. Um, there's very few situations in gaming that FPS dips bother me to the point I don't want to play anymore. I, um, I, Madden I, is one. Like when yeah, we had, well, yeah. when we were doing Madden yeah. on PC, uh, yeah. I had to mess with the settings around because low FPS on that I hated. Right. Because uh, you get those lag spikes and I, I can't I can't deal with that in that. But that's a multiplayer game mm-hmm. that requires quick button pushing and twitch actions. Whereas yeah. like World of Warcraft multiplayer game, that's, I played that game in single digits forever, yeah, I know, and it I was gonna say. it didn't really bother me. And like even now, even today, like okay, I can run World of Warcraft in 4K and blah 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 at ultra settings, but then I'm only running at like 25 FPS and I just don't care. I'll just run the game at 25 <laughs> FPS. Everyone else will be like, why don't you lower the stuff down and get to 60 or get to hundred plus? I'm like, I don't know. I do it. And yeah, it feels smooth, but then the game doesn't look as good. And I just rather have the game look good and have my character every, every now and then I go like this to this. I, I, I'm used to I'm clicking. Sort of, I'm used I'm to clicking used to now it, and then it, having it my spell cast like, now. <laughs> like it doesn't, I don't know. It doesn't bother me as much. So, like, Starling Battle for Atlas. There are FPS dips in Starling Battle for Atlas, and I just didn't care. Mm-hmm. It bothered me. Maybe it's because it's solo, single player. I don't yeah. know. It yeah. just didn't bother me. So, like, that's why David X Machina, like, someone put it out. Oh, but what about the F- Oh, yeah, I remember the frame rate dips here and there. I remember, like, in my mind, I'm like, oh, that's not that good. But then I just stopped caring. Yeah. So I'm one of those people that where frame rate, I guess, doesn't matter as much to it- me. It like it matters it, for some other reason. It matters. It ma- Like I would rather there be a smooth frame rate than not. Um, but I honestly don't care as long as it's playable and fun. I care that it's fun what I'm playing, and if I'm having a lot of fun, eh, frame rate dipping here and there is whatever. I'll mm-hmm. deal with it because it's fun. Yeah. So I guess the moral of the story is I think David X Machina is so fun that the frame rate dips don't bother me. Yeah. Um, Yoshi. Yoshi. Ooh, I have to play the Yoshi demo. I know, I have to get that. Mm. It's good. Yeah. It's a very good demo. Um, very easy, but Yoshi's always easy, and it's a yeah. beginning stage, so yeah. whatever. Another collect-a-thon. Yeah. Love it. Um, I mean, the only knock is the resolution. They, uh, they, they went with 60 FPS. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you can tell, like, forget Digital Foundry and their analysis. Like, I didn't need their analysis to tell me this wasn't running in HD. Um, there are many times, especially in handheld, where it's like, okay, it's a little blurry. This game, it's like there's a filter over it, and it's all blurry. Why? Yeah. Because they wanted to maintain 60 FPS, and they wanted to do it in Unreal Engine 4. Unreal Engine 4 is really hard to maintain 60 FPS in. Uh, so they decided to sacrifice resolution uh, in order to do that. So it, it runs sub-HD pretty much all the time. 
Um, it's a dynamic resolution scaler that pretty much never hits 720p. So um, that bothered me a bit. It bothered me to the point that, what did I just say earlier? Okay, you know, games run in single digits and I'm okay sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't find if Yoshi was 30 FPS. Mm-hmm. I don't think I would have cared. I know a lot of other people would have, though. They would have been screaming, how could this not be 60 and blah, blah, blah. blah. Like, I don't know. I would have been fine with 1080p and 30 FPS. Four. Personal personal <laughs> preference, but it's a single player game, the two. So like it was a multi and the thing is I know some people in platformers they love that smoothness. And I'm not saying that I wouldn't prefer sixty FPS. I would prefer ten eighty P and sixty FPS. But if I have to have one or the other, I'd rather have ten eighty P and thirty. But that's just me. Everyone is different. You know, I'd rather have seven twenty and sixty if possible. But we apparently it's not possible with this game. So um huh. it, very interesting though. I mean who knows? Maybe a Switch Pro or something will come out someday and games like this with dynamic resolution scalers will just stay at 720 or higher when when that comes out. But Maybe. If it comes out. Uh, and, yeah, I think that, that pretty much rounds out what I played this month. Just some demos and uh, Tetris 99. Yeah. All right. I guess we can get to the, the big the big boy, the big story. Yeah. The, uh, the, the one that uh, people might love yeah. or hate our response to. Yeah. So, over the past week, the new generation of Pokemon was finally unveiled. Mm -hmm. Officially on Pokemon Day, which is the anniversary of the... Is it the anniversary of the whole series or just the anime? I can't remember. Yeah, I don't remember. Anyways. I didn't even realize it was Pokemon Day. Yeah, yeah. Sure. 27th of February, Pokemon Day. Um, Anyways, I know that. Come on. You're not a true Pokemon fan. You know what Pokemon Day is. Anniversary of our childhood. Um, Right. Anyways. uh, (laughs) As I don't even remember if it's for the game or for the anime. Yeah, I think yeah. it's I think it's for the it's for the whole series. But anyways, yeah. Um, so Pokemon Day, uh, they did a seven minute Nintendo Direct, or I should say Pokemon Direct, as Pokemon they called Direct. it. Yes. Again, never been unveiled in a Nintendo Direct. Yes. But a Pokemon Direct. All right. Uh, it was quite literally just about the eighth generation games. <laughs> um, no. Uh, no. Yes and no. It's a yes. Okay, the last little five second snippet that just makes you get frustrated. Yeah, right. All right. Um. So, what are what are what are we talking about? What are these games called? Uh, Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield. Pokemon Sword and Shield. For starters, name. What do you what do you think about the names? I like it. I I think it's it's. I've seen it's some people me. that don't like it. I don't know. Uh, what. I mean, there's people that don't like it. There's always people who like and don't like anything. One, right. I like high medieval fantasy. Right. Sword and shield. Sounds cool to me. Right. Logos look cool. Yeah. I like the wolf Definitely. heads, the color schemes. Obviously, red and blue. Yeah. Yeah. Who's going to hate on that color scheme for Pokemon? Right. Uh, but I guess I can understand like why some people might not like the names or like the logos. Because if someone had told you it was going to be Pokemon, sword and shield like a month ago, mm-hmm. and they showed you these logos, you would have been like, that's, that's got to be made up. Mm-hmm. Like, that doesn't look like Pokemon. Yeah. Sword and shield, they don't, they don't, you don't fight anyone with a sword and shield. Yeah. You know, you a wolf head, like, yeah, what is this, the Witcher? Right. I mean, I, I get it. But, <laughs> but, but here's the thing. We don't know the full context. Right. So, like, it looks confusing now, but then when we know the full context of the game, maybe it all makes sense. So, right. it, it's all... Right. It, you know, it's all just left up to our imaginations now. Like, I think people just got used to um, other things that I guess made more sense than colors. Yeah. Um, or like minerals. Mm-hmm. Sun, moon. Yeah, like stars. Yeah, just like I don't know. I guess more scientificy kind yeah. of terms, maybe. Yeah. No, I more, more I something it. like that. Whereas like sword and shield is like no, like that's fantasy. Like when you say sword and shield, you instantly think like medieval ages, right. and you're just like. Huh? Yeah, what? But yeah, yeah, this doesn't take place in medieval ages. Yeah. It takes place in what was it Galara? Ga- Galar oh, yeah. or something like that? Yeah. Um I probably butchered the name. I I apologize. I don't have like a info sheet right in front of me. Uh but the land itself, the overall map. Mm-hmm. I think it's the UK. You think it's the UK? I think it's the UK. I initially, like, in the stream was saying uh, Italy, Italy, Italy. Yeah. But I'm like the more and more I looked at it, I'm like, "Oh, wait." That that looks more like the UK, just elongated a little bit. Um, even like 
there seems to be like this wall on the map mm-hmm. um, that reminded me of Game of Thrones, <laughs> like the wall in the north, uh, and uh, like that just reminded me of oh England and Scotland. Yeah. S- yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sword and shield. Uh, the one chick is wearing like the Scottish kind of cap. Yep. Uh, there's the one town that we got to like a look at that looked like it had Big Ben, although it wasn't Big Ben, but mm-hmm. it, it looked it looked right. like yeah, it looked yeah, like yeah, yeah. it looked like London. Basically, is what you. it looked like. Um, I know it had like a little steampunk vibe there, but whatever, it looked like London. Yeah. Uh, and uh, to be fair, a lot of people when they think steampunk, they they start to think of London because that's like where some of the steam like revolution started, mm-hmm. like an actual technology and stuff mm-hmm. at one point in time, trains and all that. So, um. I think it's a uh, – let's just – I've already made a video on this. Eric, what what are your thoughts? Uh, we, we saw about, I don't know, about a minute and a half of the game itself. Yeah. So I, so what are, your, what are your thoughts on this game? It, positives, looks beautiful. Um, I, I – yeah. That's it? It's your only uh, positive. No, I, I mean, I do like the the, the starter Pokemon are pretty cool. I, I do like them. Um, uh, I do like the I for the first time ever. I think I like the grass type starter the most. Grookey. Yeah, you're feeling Grookey. Yeah, yeah. Well, you weren't feeling Bulbasaur back in the day. What's wrong with you? Yeah, right. No, <laughs> not the most. Um, yeah. Um, I did see one thing that kind of bothers me. Uh oh, here we go. Let's uh, go. Well, uh, sorry. So one other, th- yeah, okay. Thing that bothers me the most. Looks like we're back to the random encounters. We're definitely back to the random encounters, based on what we saw. Lock and change. Why? I know. Why? I, I just don't understand it. I, I get it. It's a core mechanism of the. It used to be a core mechanism of the game. It is a core mechanism, and everything but let's go. I know. But that's like the one thing from Let's Go we always want to carry it over. Yeah. It, I hate having to go into an area and not know if there's a Pokemon there and I have to sit and walk around for however long to just find no, not it. And not just that. What I loved about how it worked in Let's Go is um, you walk around an area and you would get, I don't know, you'd run into... 20 or 30 different random encounters just to find the one you want. Right. Yeah, Whereas, one. like, in Let's Go, yeah, you still have to move around back and forth between areas to make new right. Pokemon appear, but you don't have to keep encountering them right. in order to finally right. get the one that you want. Right. Yep. You could just keep moving around, keep enjoying the world and the music, and, like, right. you don't have to get bogged down as much. And uh, that is something I loved in Let's Go. It is one of the biggest things in Let's Go that was absolutely nailed. Yes. And uh, that's not how this game works. This game I, is straight up traditional random encounter. I, I mean, literally, you saw him sneaking through the grass. I don't know if that was um, a, a potential move to like get a jump on a Pokemon. Maybe. You know, I don't know. That could be a new mechanic or something. But what I do know is they were just kind of sneaking through the grass and yeah. yep. Pikachu. It's like, oh, jeez. Yeah. Hooray for random encounters. Uh, random encounters. I mean... Yes, you can still have "quote unquote" random encounters in Let's Go. Well, yeah, they would like pop up right in front of your yeah. feet, yeah. But you could still. But you would know what you're fighting with, with good with see. good stick work. With good stick work, you can avoid it. Yeah, or, or at least you knew what you were going into. <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah. Well, crap! I didn't want to fight this. Yeah, or accidental can't. bump into. Yeah, yeah, right. But you know, it's one of those things that you know you're just wandering around Zubat's cave. There, you can see the Zubats. Hey, guess what? I can. Not fight them <laughs> if I don't want to. Yeah, it's it, that's the part that it, it, it bothers bothered you. Me. It bothers me. I don't know why. Because Pokemon has been that's the way it's encounters. always been. Yeah, it's always been that way. But now that I've gotten the Pokemon on the screen, I don't, I don't want to go back. I don't. Why is it better for you? I can see things. I know if something's there. I can avoid it if I don't want to fight it. It it, it makes gameplay faster. And especially with how it, it... Again, going back to being a Gen 1-er, quote-unquote. 
and having the gotta catch them all thing slammed down my throat over and over and over again. I still slammed it down my throat and well, th- right, chem one so right, long ago. Right. With how many Pokemon there are, speeding up the game to get all of them isn't a bad thing. I think it's just uh people like it. Like I like it just because it's it feels like a game it, it, it's like it respects my time. Mm-hmm. Um, I get that in RPGs there's always a lot of grinding and a lot of this yeah. but here's the thing the grinding is usually for the purpose of leveling and you're still going to have to grind to level your Pokemon so like the grinding had a purpose but in Pokemon if you were just trying to catch you weren't trying to level any Pokemon mm-hmm. or, or learn any new moves you were just trying to catch a specific type of Pokemon all the grinding was was tedium mm-hmm. and you still like even in Let's Go like, you, just because you know there's, like, a 1% chance that a uh, shiny this or whatever, you know, a shiny ponytail or whatever is going to appear in this area, it's a 1% chance. It could still take you hours of just farming that yeah. area to still get it. So it didn't make it easier to get the Pokemon, but what it did was respect the time in between also, the Pokemon. Also, it feels more realistic. Yes. If I'm out in a world and I'm walking through knee high grass, waist high grass, I can generally see the grass moving. I may not know the exact Pokemon. Pretty sure so, I could see a Snorlax above the <laughs> Right, 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 right. But if like let's say <laughs> or a, a deer a, a or, a, or a or a Pidgey or a Pikachu sure. if they're in the tall if it's in quote unquote taller grass. Yeah, yeah. You may not know which one it is, but you'll know a Pokemon's there. Yeah. Whereas, and that would have been fine too, like if they would have just showed that the grass is moving. Yeah. Like, okay, you don't know what it is, but you know something. Right. Um, especially if you're out in the open. Especially for granted, the smaller Pokemon, too. Granted, you don't generally have random encounters out in the open. You're generally in grass or you're, you know, whatnot, unless you're in a cave. Like, when you're out in between worlds, if you're in the middle of a walkway, you're not going to have random encounters. But, you know, if they're out in the open, like, in a cave, if, you know, you see things, it makes it more realistic. Sure. Okay. Is there any other bad takes you have? Or negative takes, I guess, of, of the rest of it? No. No, it, it looks beautiful. It looks like it could be fun. Um, I never had a problem with the... I, I like battles, so it, it... You know, the whole battling to capture type thing. You know, that part I am neither here nor there on. I know you like the... Just throw the Pokeball to capture. Uh, yeah. It, that... I, I understand. I see both ways. I like battling. I knew that wasn't going to come back, but I... Right. I prefer it. I right. wish it would come back, but whatever. Right. I know. It actually makes more people happy that that's not there. So. Right. Um, that one doesn't... That one didn't bother me as much. Um, I think when I... So, my, my original take on this, on this stuff was that I think it does have the potential to be the greatest Pokemon game ever made. They said they want it to be the greatest Pokemon game ever made. It looks um, grander... I guess is a good term to use than any other Pokemon game I've seen. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like they are, are making a bigger world. This is the biggest map I think I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, the camera angles. I don't know if there's a free roam camera. I hope you can control the camera. If you can't, it's going to be a big letdown for me personally. Mm. Uh, and I think it's going to be a letdown for a lot of people. If you can't control that camera and actually enjoy the world. Mm-hmm. Um, that is something I've always wanted in Pokemon. Mm-hmm. Understood why it wasn't possible in top down, right. you know, 3D. But we're not on 3DS anymore. Right. Give us the ability to enjoy the vistas. Um, anyways, that's besides the point. Um, I my my original take was like this to me looks like what the next Pokemon game would be if there was just a more powerful like like the next 3DS came out. Yeah. You know, whatever, 3DS2, 4DS, whatever you want to call it. Um, like, the next generation 3DS comes out, this feels like that's what Pokemon would be on that. It would just be what Pokemon's always been with a little more on top. Mm-hmm. And that's what this game feels like. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, and that might lead to it being the best Pokemon game ever made. Mm-hmm. But for me, like, I have this thing in my mind, and this is totally on me, 
Game Freak never promised this. In fact, we should have expected it to be more like this because Game Freak said they were making the they that Let's Go was made for TV, that Gen 8 was made for handheld. So that should have been our first clue that they weren't going to do anything super special. I have this thing in my mind where I want, like, how long have we wanted a Pokemon game on a home console? Like a traditional Pokemon game. I mean, basically our whole life. Yeah. Basically, we've been waiting. Like, yeah. like some of okay. you guys are like, oh, whatever. Like, I've been waiting for this for 20 years. Yeah. Ever since it came out on Game Boy, the ins- or, or not even just not just Game Boy, ever since we got Pokemon Snap, yeah. ever since we got Pokemon Stadium. Stadium, yeah, great. How badly did we want a full Pokemon game like Pokemon Stadium oh, RPG yeah. style on a home console? Oh, yeah, definitely. We never got it. No. We never got it. It's been 20 years and it hasn't happened. Yeah. So for 20 years, I've been waiting yeah, well. for the core series to come to a home console, and it comes. And this is what we get? Yeah. This, to I me, will, is just... I agree with that one. It's another handheld. It, it, it's another handheld Pokemon game, like all the rest yeah. of them, and people are going to be happy with it. And I'm like, where is my next leap? My where risk? The, my where my is the innovation? The the to a certain extent. Uh, the the Bravados. I don't like Ocarina of Time, Super Mario sixty four. You know, mm-hmm. Metroid Prime. Yeah, like all these series that like. They were always this one thing, and then finally, when they had the power to be something more, they did it. Yeah, I do want to. I do want to have one caveat on this, though. We are basing this all off a yes, really, really, really short clip. Sure. So there is that caveat. But you what have, I you have but what I'm looking in. for that clip is like the exact polar opposite. Right. I'm not going to. No, 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 they're no, not going to sure, scrap that sure. and make a whole new game for between sure. now and the end of the year. I, I understand, <laughs> but you have to throw that caveat in it. Sure. It, it, it's based on a, like, based on a really there's, there's small even thing, clip. There's even things in the game that like... I like the snow. That was pretty cool. Sure. And then it was like snowing and the weather was there and, and stuff like that. That was pretty cool. If they if they carry it through with like every once in a while it rains or... Sure, but or to me, like that, we're just cool. talking about natural progressions of what happens right. anyways. Yeah. Like, but, Pokemon has changed many times over the years, but it's all just been that natural progression. Where's the leap? Yeah. Where's that leap? Mario 64, I'm sorry, that was not a natural progression from Super Mario World. No, not really. That was, what? Yeah. Um, excuse me, yeah, right. no one thought that. And then, oh, that happened to people like, oh, when are we going to get like a 3D Mario or 3D Zelda or whatever? That's fine. Well, you know, maybe you expected there to be a 3D Zelda because of a precedent set by prior games. So here's my thing. Where's my 3D Pokemon game? I'm sorry. This to me is Link's Awakening DX. Yeah, we're still. This is Link's Awakening on Switch. This is top. This is still top down. This isn't really like the full 3D perspective that we want. We still like 2.5D. It's not. Well, it's okay. It's in 3D, right? Like, I'm not saying these aren't 3D character models, and that like we haven't seen angles where you know, but like still, it's the camera angle. Okay still gives off this perspective that you're just playing another Pokemon game. Mm-hmm. That's not like this revolutionary thing. You're not with the camera behind Link running through that grass, right? You're still looking at the grass running yeah. through it from the top. It's like, what? That's not, that's not new. Yeah. And uh, I, there's going to be new mechanics. There's going to be new stuff. But, it'd be oh. interesting to see a Pokemon game first person. That would be interesting. Again, and I'm not even saying that we need an open world. I know some people really want an open world one. Yeah. I don't know that we need open world. I'm just saying something different, yeah. something fresh. Like, take a risk. Mm-hmm. This feels so safe to me. Mm-hmm. This is like the safest they could have done a new generation of Pokemon on Switch. It's, look, we know what we're good at. We're just going to keep doing that and make it look prettier. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay. Yeah. No, and I even get then, I get you. Even then, if you really want me to nitpick, for as, as gorgeous as the game looks, it only looks gorgeous for a Pokemon game. Yeah. Um, if you dig through the visuals themselves, they don't exactly look that impressive. Yeah. Um. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I've only watched it twice. So uh, really well, I've watched it like a, a few dozen times. It's like there's textures in the game that are super blurry, which. That happens, right? Like, a lot of games have low poly textures, uh, but, like, it feels like there's a lot of them in this with an art style that doesn't need... Again, though. And again, that's where your caveat, it's not done yet, can come into play. Those textures can be improved, but it's it's still, it's like, 
But but there's other things we know have to be improved. As an example, where were they, all the NPCs? They obviously won't be right. there. You assume right. they're going to be there. God, right. I hope the world's not this empty. <laughs> I mean, if it is, then, it, then it's definitely that. post-apocalyptic, and what the hell happened? <laughs> that why is be, everyone dead? That would be interesting. <laughs> why is Post, everyone dead? That's why it's short, Sword and Shield. It's post-apocalyptic, <laughs> and we have to go back to the basically the Middle Ages. There you go. Yeah, we got to crawl through a hole and find the Kakiri sword. Yes. <laughs> and then find... And then, <laughs> oh, uh, man. But another thing, though, too, is how much of these... How much of that was actual gameplay versus trailer? Well, some of it I think was trailer for sure. Like because that opening shot they show of like I think is probably the starting the starting village. Uh, that to me is trailer and or a cutscene lead in because I don't yeah. think because you're not controlling a character at that point. So to me that's just a hey we backed off the camera look at how pretty this looks yeah. and like the thing is when they did that some people were like oh that reminds me of Breath of the Wild remember that opening shot in Breath yeah. of the Wild where you see the whole world yeah. and it's like yeah but that's not actually representative of the gameplay per right. se although in Breath of the Wild you can get some viewpoints like that yeah. like in this game none of the camera angles after that when the character was actually being controlled on screen mm-hmm. looked anything like that right. I mean heck there was even one where you're going through like this mountain pass snowy area that yeah, you mentioned yep. and like it was completely top down completely, oh, yeah, yeah, totally yeah, traditional sure. yeah, yeah, Pokemon so it's like, but I don't want that. Yeah, I've had that for twenty years. Yeah. Um, and here's the thing: this isn't me saying these games aren't going to be great. Mm-hmm. I, I'm I'm picking them up. Let's go was good enough for me to give this generation a shot and see. Who knows? Maybe it becomes my favorite Pokemon game of all time. But I'm still gonna have this thing in the back of my mind that I'm playing this on what Nintendo is telling me is a home console. Right. In fact, I'm just straight up gonna be playing most of this game on my TV. And I finally have that home console Pokemon game that I've been begging for 20 years, and it's just more of what I've already been playing for 20 years. Yeah, just well, I, prettier. I, I I don't know which which ones you, it's textures you were specifically talking about, but I had in my mind I was thinking you were talking more about like that well, the house that the the, the roof on the house looks horrible with with when that when it was they looked almost like an oil pump but it's not it, that's what it looks like it reminded me of it looked like an oil drill show you but one example not. i tweeted it but look at the texture on the on the arm logo oh God, are you yeah, kidding is, me right now yeah that is disgusting that's on switch yeah it, walking into the stadium at the end there's this l- logo patch on his yeah. arm it looks i mean it looks okay I'm gonna use. I, I I don't like bringing up other YouTubers' opinions on things like this because I, I don't want people to feel like it shaped mine. But um, the Bitblock did a video and he's not a fan of Pokemon. So full disclosure there that you know he's not a fan of Pokemon. So he's not gonna have a lot of nice things to say anyways. But he brought up an interesting uh, thing multiple times when he was reacting to the the footage. It looks like a Wii game. It looks like a GameCube game. It does not look like a Switch game. Mm-hmm. Okay. Of all yeah. the Switch games we've gotten, like this game does not feel like a Switch game. Like, put it this way: if you do side by side comparisons of that trailer and then even something like Octopath Traveler, right? Mm-hmm. Super old school. Octopath Traveler looks so much crisper and so much better. And yes, I realize that's a finished game versus an unfinished game, but it's right. like, do we really think Game Freak's gonna do suddenly right fix that? Right. Yeah. Like, um, those little minor details that they just don't care about most of the time. Yeah. That we don't notice on the 3DS and DS because the resolution's so low. Tiny. Who cares? Yeah. Right. Like, I mean, think about it. Think right. about this. Pokemon Let's Go came out, and there's been a lot of, like, uh, you know, criticisms of it. But for the most part, people think it looks crisp and clean yeah. and, and all that. And I'm not saying that's necessarily got better texture work, although it's crisper texture work. But they still, um, you go in to put your Pokemon to heal them. What what are the images used for healing your Pokemon? You know that they put the six Pokemon the on the screen. Sprite. The old sprites. When you're buying things in the shop, what are all the images? The old sprites. Why? Yeah. Why are we? Why? So know. like Game come on, Game Freak did that. So now I'm supposed to suddenly think they're gonna fix this? Yeah, I don't know. You're right. Yeah. I, why? They know 15 plus million people are gonna buy these things. Why? 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 Why spend the money? Why put in the work? That's why. Why? That's the thing. There's a difference between Game Freak and Nintendo's internal studios in that Nintendo's internal studios care so much, a lot of the time, not all the time, about game quality with their right. core IP. Like, you would never imagine going 
gosh, imagine in Breath of the Wild going up to Beetle and you go to buy arrows and the symbol for an arrow is the old school Damn. NES arrow symbol. I mean, It'd be cool it's looking, cool. but imagine the entire but, inventory is that right, all the right. time. No, it's like, I get you, I get you. W- really, you couldn't make a new art piece for the damn arrow. And the other thing too is, I was gonna, I was gonna ask. I, <sighs> I thought about something. You know, it. You showed me that picture, and I don't know why this bothers me, but the guy looks like he's got a helmet head. It, the hair is just. There's nothing to it. It's a. It's. Yeah, in, no the, in the final version no, of the podcast here, I'll, I'll throw up the image we're talking about. No, yeah, it's, it's just flat. And I was like, well, could they texture that out a little bit? And I was like, would the Switch be able to handle and Of course the Switch. Go look at Dragon like, Quest Eleven. Well, not just that, but Breath of the Wild, the, uh, the individual grass blades. I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, never mind. It, it, the second you brought up Breath of the Wild, I'm like, wait a minute, grass blades, never mind. It can definitely handle it. Like, I'm not even mad about the lack of anti-aliasing because Nintendo just doesn't use anti-aliasing. So like the little, um, the little blurriness around the edges doesn't really bother me so much. But like that, that logo, I oh, mean, that's beyond that terrible. is that is horrible, ab- 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 absolutely horrible. And it's not even that. Like if you look earlier and when he's walking up, his shoes look just as bad as that. And it's like, Ooh, yeah. And, and there's like a point, even in that be- opening shot when they show you the village. If you actually look on the edges along the uh, along the bridge, um, some of the texture of the grass or the moss or whatever, I don't even know what it is. It's so damn blurry. Mm-hmm. It's like mm-hmm. there's there's just apparently, parts of this everywhere apparently, in this thing. I must not have. I I well, well, be, well because it, it okay when you're looking at the overview truck, there's so much going on. Yeah. Right. Like you notice the snow, you notice the water, you notice the, the cool right. effects or this and that. like. Like draw, there's there, there's they action. Your, they yeah. draw your, your attention view away from to it. the to the the crisp clear yeah. area. Yeah, the, your eyes are being drawn away from it. But when, like when you step back and and you look at the broader scope of it, it's like ooh, like like oh, like like they zoomed in on that weather vane, right? Mm-hmm. And it's like okay, yeah, that weather vane's cool, but look at that roof. What is going on? That is disgust. But yeah. they're, they're focusing on the weather vane, yeah. so it's like. And the thing is, this isn't me saying that this isn't the best-looking Pokemon's ever been in terms of the core games. I'm saying in terms of the core games because there are parts of me that are starting to think games like Pokemon Snap, even at a lower resolution, look better. I like the Pokemon Snap. Pokemon Snap is so Pokemon good. Snap Pokemon is Stadium, so Pokemon cool. Coliseum. Heck, yeah. someone needs to get out Pokemon Coliseum and start comparing mm-hmm. it to this game. There you go. Because the more and more I look at it, the more and more I'm like, God, this is like Wii in, G- in GameCube level. Like, where, wait, why doesn't this feel like a new generation game? It, it feels like it's the same old, same old. I know. To, and, to a certain extent. And, and, and I'm going to get blasted for this. Oh, yeah. I've been blasted I'm, for I'm, it. I'm sure we're getting blasted it, right now. It's, I think it's going to be the greatest Pokemon game ever made. I think that they are going to achieve their ambition and this is going to become one of the most beloved Pokemon games of all time, and I might be singing its praises. But I can't help but have this feeling that I feel like this should have been more significant than what it is. Yeah. But there's nothing I can do about that. And people are going to, it's your own personal expectation, it's this, it's that. I'm like, well, one, I don't think anyone should ever have the expectation for a game to look like it's from two generations ago. There is that. But it's not your personal expectation. They literally said they wanted this to be the best, so they set a high bar. But here's the thing: yeah, it could be the best with it, it could be the best without being my expectations. Though. Like their bar yeah. to be the best is just to be better than what all the other games have ever been. It doesn't have to be an opening of time of the series, right? But generally, when somebody says that, Nintendo, if there's ever been an expectation set, it was Nintendo. Whenever yeah. there's been this, like the 3DS and Switch, it's worlds apart in terms of power. Yeah. So, whenever something like that happens, what has Nintendo done in the past? They've done something special with it. Mm -hmm. Well, this was a chance for Pokemon, finally. Mm -hmm. And I'm left feeling like there's other games on, like, Pocket Tournament, hello? Mm -hmm. No. Looks better. No, question. I'm I'm fairly certain that it works with the the Pokeball Plus. What? The new, gonna, the new Pokemon. I'm why guessing. would it? Why would it? It doesn't have the the motion throwing mechanics, as far as we're aware. Mm. Yeah. Then I. 
Granted, Pokemon's always been able to be controlled by basically one or two buttons, so yeah. it might still work in, as a control, yeah. base controller. I don't know. But they didn't talk about that. So It, it almost feels like it should. <laughs> I mean, you, you pay for a controller for one game. Yeah, but you knew I, that when you bought it. I know. You and knew I that when it. you bought it. And I bought it. For some ungodly reason, I Mew. bought it. Yeah. Mew. Yeah. Let's just be honest. Yeah. You want to complete your... You're, yeah, it's Gen 1. It you need that there Pokedex. You need there that Pokedex. Is. There it is. <laughs> um, But, you know, I that aside, um, next thing for me is... Good God, is there a, some sort of stadium league okay. something? So I think this is where we get into some positives because... As much as I, it's not meeting my expectation for what I hoped that the first like console Pokemon game could be, especially compared to prior console Pokemon games. Anyways, um, setting all that aside and setting the visual quirks and everything aside, there are some things about this that look pretty exciting. Um, obviously, we talked about the weather. Yeah. Um, some of some of the different themes are really cool, like you no know, steampunk in London. Yeah. Um, yeah. It looked like there was like this futuristic thing going on above the wall of the map, and this massive city that's sprawling and bigger than anything I think mm-hmm. I've ever, ever seen in Pokemon. So like like that's that that's a thing that exists that we didn't really get to see much of. Um, and there, at, at the end of the thing, and even on the map, like there's like this stadium. And there might be multiple of these stadiums. People presume they were gyms, but maybe they're just stadiums. Maybe they are gyms. Maybe the maybe I the don't gyms know. are stadiums. Well, now. if you think about it, like you go to the animes, a- animated yeah. series, like right. Ash is fighting in tons of stadiums right. all the time, and it's not yeah. for gym badges. Yeah. There's gyms and there's stadiums, and the That's stadiums true. are That's like true. the leagues. That's very true. Right? Yeah. That's where like you're trying to get you know the rated in the, the indigo league the jodo league like yeah. you're trying to get like rated yeah. and ranked and, and climb up the rankings and eventually fight the championship um and i wonder if they're bringing that aspect from the animated series which to the games could be cool uh, that which part I, could be especially if they make it semi multiplayer where you're doing the stadium battles but um you have the initial NPC ranks and, and all that stuff, but like there's an additional league in there where you and say, you know, 20 of your friends can join up at one league at one gym and you guys battle it up to go to the top and become mm-hmm. the champion there. So then not only do you get like, you know, be, get the bragging rights with your friends, you also get like some in game stuff. I think that would be really, really cool too, because then that also brings Pokemon, because Pokemon's always been multiplayer from day one. So it kind of brings it right. to life a little right. bit in that you sure you have your NPC and your single player way, but then you also have like, this multiplayer way. I think that would be cool. And I think that's something that they haven't really done. I don't know if I see him doing that, but I. Well, they talked yeah. about doing things. Um, like not being afraid of doing new and unique things as we talked about them not doing new and unique <laughs> things. But yeah. they talked about doing new and u- new unique things while having to still feel like Pokemon. And I think even within the framework of what Pokemon's always been, that could work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, That would still be what Pokemon has always been. It's just something that has been more associated with the animated series, not so much with um, the, the games as much. Um so I, I think that would be cool. There's definitely something going on with the. I hope it's not just like a cutscene for right. like the for like a, their own Elite Four or whatever. Yeah, because right. um, it looks so cool. But yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if that was if that was the case either. And I think, I think, um, I think some of the moves like we got to see some of the the Pokemon fighting moves. Um, it's hard to tell a lot of the adva- advances over what we just got and let's go. Um, but some of the moves, it looked a little more dynamic. I know we didn't see many, but it looked a little more dynamic. Well, well, I'm I'm hoping it continues well, to get fleshed out. What do you t- you mean? Double kick isn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. We didn't. I don't think we saw a double kick. So yeah, right. I hope hope double kick still that just jump. Literally two little hops in the air. Jump. Jump. Wow. Well, well it looked like it looked like the attacks actually hit the Pokemon. Yeah. Um. Which sometimes some of the attacks look like they do, and some don't, and let's go. Yeah. So, like double jump definitely doesn't, double, or double, double kick, kick doesn't look I, like you're kicking I the other Pokemon. I literally wanted to see somebody just go freaking like jump in the air and just 
good on double double yeah. leg kick. Yeah, it, it should be him. it should be like like you go over there you and you the literally and see the leg kick. go boom boom. That's two kicks. Yeah, or something like or drop kick him. Like physically, actually hit the other, like in the animated series, physically hit the Pokemon. Yeah, like don't just stay in your spot and send an attack way off. Yeah, it's like that's not really how it works. Like the physical attacks in the animated series, they're physical attacks. If it was scratch, they scratched the yeah. other Pokemon. Yeah. Um. Anyways, so. We'll see. That looked like it might be taking a step in the right direction, but we'll see. It's just a small step, though. I don't think yeah, this yeah. is like yeah, right. exactly where we would like it to be. Um, I, I'm, I'm trying to think of anything else. I mean, the missing NPCs. I'm not too concerned about that right. early alpha footage, and you know, the NPCs yeah. are usually probably the last things they put in. Um, so I'm not, I'm not too concerned about the lack of that. Uh, there, there was some cool, you know, some other cool environments. We saw like a mine it looked like with some some crystals. Uh, different color crystals briefly. That looked kind of cool. Um, so it's probably a, a nice underground area for ground Pokemon or something. Um, we saw there was like a snow village. Or like it was like winter in a village somewhere. Yeah. Uh, with the lights and everything. That was really pretty. Uh, I don't know what you do there, but it was yeah. it, that, that was really pretty. Um, there were... Uh, the, the water looks good. I don't know how the final water is going to look, but this water... You could tell like it wasn't. I don't. I'm, I don't know. The water didn't look like it was fully fleshed out to me. It looked like it had yeah. a nice start, but I'm hoping that's not the end of it. I hope. I hope it. Right. They, they make it a little bit more realistic, and I'm like, oh, but this art style. So what? The Wind Waker had pretty realistic stuff going on. They, they can make it more realistic. Yeah. They they can make that that water really, really be something special in the game. Um, I mean, heck, if they can do it, not to pet traveler, come on. <laughs> Um, I'm trying to think of, of anything else, um, that, that I remember specifically that just, I mean, the library lo- looked really cool. There was that room where the girl was in with the library. Mm-hmm. Uh, that might've just been in your hometown. It might've even been your own house. house. I don't know. Yeah. But, um, I will say like, so we've got to see the inside of, w- of what I assume is your house. Um, and even though it was kind of generic, it kind of always looks generic to be fair. Yeah. Um, one thing that we can't know that I hope is true. Like I, I've always wanted to be able to interact with more things inside buildings. Yeah. I think uh, that's kind of always been one thing Pokemon has always done poorly is there's only like set. They oh, interact with the PC or the TV trash, but cans. like or a trash can, like, but you can't open a drawer. Yeah. Why? Oh. Why can't I turn on the sink? Yeah. Why can't I do the dishes? If I want, if I have dishes in the sink, why can't I start the dishwasher? Yeah. Like it, it's a dumb, well, my new thing. And make a but, but it's come on, it, it's part of making the world feel real. Yeah, like you go into a museum and it'll be like, oh, you better not touch that. But I want to touch it. Yeah. What happens if you touch it? Touch I don't know. The game doesn't let you touch, touch it. <laughs> touch it's just a sign that says don't touch. It's like, like I, I want to be able to interact a bit more with the world. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying like Breath of the Wild, get on top of everything, and touch everything, <laughs> but Smash! like or, or break everything, but like just uh, to it just have more things interactive. Like like I don't know. I I hope that makes sense to people. I'm not 100 percent sure where I was going with that one. Yeah, well, um, I get it. Yeah, there there are some people that that think this is going to be open world because of some some things they did. Like when we saw like the hillside with the legendary. Um, stuff going on in like in a crop circle kind of thing or when we saw like a forest shot that looked very reminiscent of the old twilight princess trailer looked like this big expansive forest but it was a very brief sniff of it that might not even be in the final game um what <laughs> but things from this video are probably not gonna be in the game but it's like i look at it and i go yeah but do you really think they're gonna let us freely explore they've never let us do it not done it before why would they do it now i don't know I mean, they could, but I just, I don't think so. Yeah. Like, even, like, the hill, the hillside with, like, the thing. Well, if you notice in the hillside, when you see that, you are stuck behind a fence. So, it looks like it's just background fodder. And it's pretty background fodder, and background fodder is nice, but oh, you I want to explore it. I want to explore it. Go run off a cliff and jump on the back of a Pokemon and fly <laughs> it actually around? <laughs> you probably can't even do that in this game. No, that's what I'm saying. You're not gonna. They're not gonna allow us to do that. That'd be kind of cool. Just go run off a cliff and like. That would be sick. Throw one of your legendary like Zapdos or something and hop on its back and fly. Well, that'd away. be sick to jump off a cliff, 
like all Breath of the Wild style and throw a Pokeball and like have uh, have like Blastoise come out and you can ride on the back in the water. Yeah. Wouldn't that be sick? Yeah. That would be so sick, but like we're not gonna get that from Game Freak. Well, that, I, that's not what they do. I, I want it. I want it. Yeah. I want that kind of act like why can't we have that in the game? Like why well, I I wanna hop in the back of my squirtle <laughs> and right. <laughs> but again, the water. there's a lot we don't know. I mean, we we know we don't know as much as as we'd like to know. Right. But uh, we know yeah, uh, we know more than I thought we were going to find out. I figured we would get a title in the starters. Yeah. Um, I guess you like the starters. Yeah, I think they're cool. They're interesting. I think their designs are kind of. Me? I know this isn't even like a hot take at this point. Like they're just kind of Me? generic. I think I saw somebody on Twitter point out that the the reason the designs feel generic because you look at them it's like i mean they're they're all unique and different but then someone on twitter uh, went out and they started circling parts of of each of the starters and saying that the parts are basically just parts taken from other pokemon um, the when the when the uh score rabbit came score up, bunny score bunny sorry score bunny when that first came up those feet are easily meals easily that's the first thing I thought of. I'm like, why is Meowth running? That is the... F- I swear to God. I was like, why, what is up with Meowth? Is Team Rocket in this game? Like, is is this going to be a big thing with, like, Jesse and James and Meowth do? I mean, that's pretty cool. Oh, it's it's a new starter. Why does it have Meowth's legs? All right. Cool. I mean, I, so I can see that. I can definitely see that. The first thing, I swear to God... Was well, Meowth. Peter oh, P- Peter Alicarns, I'm about to make him really mad. Oh boy. He, he put a comment out there uh, saying, What you have to remember is uh, the Link's Awakening re- uh, remake and its art style, wherever that's going to be 60 bucks, just like uh, Pokemon. And uh, Pokemon's art style is, is, is way better. I like Link's Awakening's art style better. I'm sorry. I can give you one, well, two primary reasons. One, Pokemon's art style uh, that they're using in this game is just the normal anime art style they've been using for 20 years. There's nothing new or fresh about it. The art style in Link's Awakening is completely different than anything Zelda's ever done before. Uh, where is that? It's new. It Just by verdict of it being new and fresh and different, it already captures my heart compared I mean, to, to what I, like, this Pokemon game looks... This main character of po- the Pokemon... Looks like the main character of the last Pokemon. Yeah, it's it, like it, 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 it's the a, last Pokemon. Yeah, if you compare the let the Let's Go characters uh, with the characters from this, they look very similar. Um, outside of the fact that th- I think the characters in this one are, might be a little older because they're a little bit taller and slimmer. So I think they're a little older. Right. But the fact that you can even compare them, it's like it's kind of the same style. I'm sorry. Yeah. That it, it it looks like a Pokemon game. Like when you look at it, you're like, Which, oh yeah, that looks like a Pokemon. And then there's nothing wrong no, with there's that. There's nothing wrong with that. But you know, I, I think the bigger argument for like, oh, Link's Awakening is going to be sixty. This is going to be sixty. Is this is a new game? That's a remake. Yeah. So like, that's the argument for which one's worth more money, not art style preferences. Yes. Sorry, Peter Alicorn. I can't agree with you on that one. And one thing I will say is I didn't come away from the uh, Link's Awakening. And remember, I have a, a, a big bias to Zelda, so you always have to keep that in mind when I talk about <laughs> Zelda that. games. Um, but I didn't come away from that Link's Awakening trailer thinking, man, that's a p- bad-looking texture. Yeah, there's that. Oh, that looks really blurry there. That never crossed my mind watching that trailer, and I've watched it over and over and over again. I, yeah. But when I watch... Well, let's go trailer. It's like, uh, dude, that arm patch, the, those feet, the, the that roof, and shield. that grass. Like, there's some, sword they're like this sword and shield. Sorry, yeah. it just doesn't. That the, there's right. something that's like I have to go back and rewatch. It feels closer. lazy, and I don't. I'm not saying that Game Freak's lazy, but it feels like man, they could be doing so much better. Right. And and the only reason that I can even say that is Pokemon is massively a better seller than Zelda's ever been. Mm. Always. Pokemon is a multi-billion dollar franchise in that oh, of yeah, itself. Yeah. So, like, to me, to not expect Game Freak to not have blurry textures, like, right. I think it's a pretty basic expectation of a multi-billion dollar franchise. Well, but... Eh, there is Madden. 
<laughs> and that and that doesn't really change. Well, here's the thing. Every and year. and there's blurry texture. Like I think uh, Player Essence on Twitter brought up the fact. Oh, there's blurry textures all over Breath of the Wild. Sure, in but the it's way back. Well, no, down. and th- there's even some you can find some up close, like certain like cliff faces and stuff. Yeah. Like I get it, I understand that, but there is so much other pretty things going on it distracts you from it right like i don't feel distracted in this game from those textures like when he's walking down the hallway in the stadium with his arm patch there's, there there's nothing pretty happening the distraction of the pad that that arm patch looks like it's from the 90s <laughs> there is that um but the thing also with with breath of the wild is i can understand them missing a texture here or there because of how open that world is and well, if, sure. if they miss a there, there's a certain there, there's a certain ambition to that game, right? I, I think I think what makes people more forgiving Breath of the Wild is the ambition. There is such an ambitious nature to what Breath of the Wild is trying to do that Zelda's never done before. Yeah, that ambition's not here it, that we know of. If this is a massively open world, I can understand a few things not you know, so missing that. a few things here. Hey, and we there. have curved roads. <laughs> I, love, I love there were people out there being like, like, oh my god, guys, can you see it? the roads are now curved? I'm like, that's what we're getting excited about. <laughs> that oh, think about that. <laughs> think about how how hey, archaic hey. Pokemon has to be hey. if what we're excited about is that there's a curve in the road. Hey, we were super. They were super excited about slopes in Mario Maker Two. Yeah, that, so. that's a creative though. Yes, I know, but. That's the, the, because slopes make a difference in how you create Creating, things. Right. A curvature in the road doesn't change the no, fact you're going from that. point A to point, point B. B. Yeah, it right. just makes it more believable, right? But it's like you're excited wait, wait, about wait. that. Was it that should like, like an S, like an actual like C yeah. curve, or was it a ninety degree angle? No, 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 angle. no, no, no. Oh, okay. it, it was a curve. Okay. It was a curve. Oh, okay. So I think people got excited because oh, we can finally freely roam. Like you could freely roam mm-hmm. with your character already. It's what do the NPCs move like? The NPCs yeah. have always moved on a grid pattern. Are yeah. they going to stop moving on a grid pattern? We have no idea because the only NPC we saw was one that you battled. And what did they do? You walked by and Da-da-da-da-da. it's like that. Re- that nothing's changing here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyways, I'm I'm not mad about the game in general. I think it's no. going to be really 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 good. Uh, I think it's, again, potential to be the best Pokemon game ever, and it feels weird to talk so negatively about it, uh, but I think it's just... I... Is my bar too high? Is it possible to have a bar too... Like, I don't feel like it is when we're talking about one of the most popular franchises of all time. Shouldn't everyone's bar be that high? Yeah. Like, I'm just... Yeah, I, I'm getting kind of tired of accepting that this is what Pokemon has to be. Yeah. When we've seen glimpses and oh. traces and they're more experimental games the, of what Pokemon could be. To a certain extent, I do understand why. Because when they went kind of sort of extreme with Pokemon Go and Pokemon Let's Go, there was quite a bit of backlash of people not liking it. Pokemon, yeah, but the opposite is that Pokemon Go is the most popular Pokemon's ever been. Well, yeah, it's it's played I mean, right now by more players than any individual Pokemon game has ever been played. Yeah, like Pokemon Go is in its own category. Pokemon Let's Go moved over ten million units, so mm-hmm. it's like, yeah, people complain, but people still bought it. People still enjoyed it. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, and, and those aren't even that far. Like, like think about it. Those are like forget Pokemon Go. Right. Okay, that's a side. That, that's a side game. Yeah. You know, so you have like your your Pokemon Mystery Dungeons, your Detective yeah. Pikachu's, your yeah. um, you know, what those are all side stories, right? That's all like on on the side, like Pokemon Stadium, Snap, stuff like that. Like that's all. That's not core. Mm-hmm. Okay, those are side games. But what feels weird is in those side games, why are we seeing so much more ambition? Yeah, like yeah. why have we not had a, had a, had a new Pokemon Stadium or Coliseum game since GameCube? Like, why? I don't know. Why have we not had a Pokemon Snap? Another <sighs> Pokemon Snap. I mean, seriously. Especially on Wii U. It makes so much sense on Wii U. I don't know what... It, it makes a whole lot of sense to Switch, too. I mean... Like, there was an actual camera on the Wii U. Like, uh, yeah, what? that. Yeah. 3DS. Yeah. Could I have Pokemon... Like, yeah, uh, that, that, I, Yeah. But that's the thing. And, yeah, I understand they kind of brought the Pokemon Snap functionality back a little bit in, like, Sun and Moon. But I just... 
Well, and aren't they aren't they doing something in uh, Pokemon Go that's kind of Pokemon Snapish? Yeah, I yeah. think if I remember right, I don't remember. I don't. They're I doing a lot of things. Is. They're I, doing a lot of things in Pokemon yeah. Go. But I don't know. That's kind of all I really have to say, I guess, on on, on Pokemon. I think it's going to be great. I think it's going to be fantastic. I think there's some good things going on. Um, uh, I, 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 I want to share the story of what I told you. So I was able it. to watch, for the most part, I was able to kind of watch his stream this morning when he live streamed the Pokemon Direct. I, was, I, I took a shower during it, but... Um, I got out and was able to watch the Pokemon Direct part of it. And it got to the end, and the guy goes, and we have a whole bunch of other stuff in, in the works for Pokemon for this year. And then it ended. And both Nate and I at the exact same time went, and? You're going to show us something, right? N- no. Uh, okay. Sure. Thank you. Why? <laughs> I, that That kind of peeved me in a way. Oh, I bet. It, you can't just say, oh, we have a ton of stuff. That's it. Bye. I mean, that, that's like us just saying, we have a podcast. Bye. <laughs> I mean. Bye. It, so, it, it, it's just, I don't know. It it irked me a little bit. Oh, I'm not sure. <laughs> so, I, so I, I saw someone say that, like, the reason we haven't gotten, like, new stadiums or new, uh, like, like Pokemon Snap is because of sales or whatever. Now, obviously, no one expects a spinoff game to sell like what the core series does. But Pokemon Coliseum sold almost three million copies. If that's not that's, enough, that's to, not terrible. If that's not that's for not a spinoff terrible. game, if that's that not enough terrible. to get a new one, then nothing. I mean, Metroid exists and it only ever sells like two million. Yeah. Uh, Pokemon Snap sales we're almost at four. <laughs> I'm sorry, is four million not enough? Yeah. I know we're talking about Pokemon, but we're talking about spinoffs. Yeah. We keep getting mystery dungeons that don't even sell that much. Granted, I guess maybe they're cheaper to make. I don't know. We're t- ah. <laughs> yeah. the, the, like when you say, oh, so suddenly 3.7 million is not enough to get a new one. Well, I guess Zelda should have been done ages ago, huh? Yeah. There is that. Like. Yeah. Yeah. I. I, I that I That you. is a weak excuse. That's you. a weak excuse. I hear you. Anyways. <sighs> All right. I don't think I have anything else. I don't think so either. Hey, uh, uh, I mean, we do know one other game coming from Game Freak this year. It's just not Pokemon. Town. Maybe, maybe all their ambitions put in town. I maybe don't know. that's maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Well, that's saying it's still town. Because wasn't that just a, it was a tenor to title? title it's town. Yeah. Yeah. So probably will be the final title. More than likely. But we'll see. I don't really know a whole lot about that game either. So. Yeah, and hopefully we see a little bit more about it. Eventually. Anyways, that's it. That's episode ninety-eight, Tender Prime yeah. podcast. Yeah. Uh, where can? Oh, excuse me. I'm pick up. I mean, where can they find the podcast, Eric? <laughs> oh, good God! You're gonna do this to me again. iTunes, Google, uh, through the Google Play uh, podcast app. Uh, YouTube, obviously. Hello, NintendoPrime.net. I know I'm missing one. Podbean. There it is. I feel like I'm still missing one more. I feel like I'm missing one more. Oh, this guy copyright strike for that. Yeah, your turn to take over. Patreon. Oh, yeah. Hey, there you go. You know, the most important one, the one where they can get it a whole day early, the audio version, for $5 a month. Also, if you're a $5 nut backer on Patreon, you get mentioned in one podcast per month at the the beginning of the podcast. Uh, Like we did during this episode for, I don't know, was it 20 or 30 people we did that for? Um, I want to thank all of you guys for tuning in. Thank you so much for your support on Patreon. Your continued support throughout this month, or throughout the past month, I guess, of February, uh, in spite of the lack of content. I promise that things are going to be getting better, because I don't think this winter weather is going to continue all year i hope not i don't know You're right One it's still me. happening so uh we'll, we'll see but anyways regular content uh should start coming out uh in this new month of march so cool stuff i guess uh that's it you can follow me on twitter at ninty prime you can follow eric on twitter at emo 8790 awesome do you have any uh closing uh g- hold on hold on oh gosh let's close with this oh lord tell him a joke 
Just pull one right, right, right off, right out of the brain. What? <laughs> you don't don't want me. You know how many jokes you've told me in your life? Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah how many ever heard appropriate? <laughs> it can be inappropriate. Just pick your least, your least inappropriate, inappropriate joke. I, so no dead baby jokes. Oh, <laughs> two guys walk into a bar. Another one ducks. Oh, you go, you go with the lame classic. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I love putting Eric on the spot like this. It's so funny. <laughs> I, I don't do this for a living. <laughs> I can't come up with a joke joke on, on right away. So I'm just like, you know what? I haven't heard one of them in a while. I was waiting oh, to, waiting for God. you to say just one that was like, oh, so inappropriate. Got to cut. Yeah, oh, Got to yeah. cut. I, I know my jokes. <laughs> my jokes live in the gutter. I... I <laughs> I can't. Do you want this video to be able to go up at all? It's already up right now. We're live. <laughs> Nintendo Prime. Thank you guys for uh, tuning in, and we'll catch you in the next one. <laughs> oh, Lord.